with cheap houses close to the steel mill. The newcomers have made Cringilla their own suburb. Hardly any Australians live here now and the foreigners have it to themselves. The foreigners live as they used to live back home. They are bringing up their children as if they were still in Turkey or Argentina or Yugoslavia. The children, born and reared in Australia, are foreigners. Before they start school, they learn little or no English. They do not know they are Australians. Cringilla is something like a ghetto. In Australia, by law, children must attend school. For the children of Cringilla, it's like being born again. For the second time, they leave the womb, this time at the age of five, to face the shock of a new language and new customs. I heard one person say that we were wogologists, meaning that we teach wogs. And around this area you just don't say that and you never think that. This is my first year at kindergarten. The first day was quite traumatic. They don't speak any English at all. And here are we, you know, jabbering away in English. It must be frightening for them, it really must. They're naturally musical, but I suppose our songs are foreign to them too. The children, I think, try to escape because this is so unreal to them, it's not natural. And we had to keep the doors locked because they kept running away and home and this went on for three weeks yet in 12 weeks they're now happy to come and stay I love them I think they're beautiful children compared to the Australian children they're more affectionate and they're not cheeky like Australian kids will be rude and cheeky back mm. sometimes they just haven't got it. Before I come to school, my boys, I never speak Australian. I think this school, good school, good plan for my children. My boy is happy here. Mr. Levisianos, he's a nice man. Good morning, everybody. His mother was Australian, but his father was Greek, Thank you very much. and he was sometimes called a wog. Luke Levisianos is the principal of Cringilla Public. He gets a lot of loyalty from his staff, and it might stem from the fact that they know he took a drop in salary to stay with them and the migrant children. Cringilla is one school a lot of professional teachers would avoid. It's no place for a teacher whose reputation depends only on exam results. Now, the news is very important. As you know... The people of Wollongong do regard Cringilla as a ghetto. But I've been here for nearly four years now, and uh, I don't think there's the ghetto mentality. There's a real air of hopefulness about the place. The parents can see hope. 
perhaps not so much for themselves but for their children. policy is to make the learning situation as relaxed and happy as possible. Children at this school have been subjected to a lot of stresses and anxieties. The mere fact of having to be uprooted from their own country and replanted here uh, must be a terrible shock. I feel that if we add any further stresses or strains in the school environment, uh, we're doing something that's very damaging to them. Our greatest difficulty is just plain communicating with these immigrant people. And we have so many vitally important things to say to each other. Just the simplest thing like an explanation for a child's absence, a notice about um, an excursion that we're planning. Uh, we might want to tell the parents to keep the child home because he might have head lice. These little communications are complicated terribly by the fact that we can't speak their language. The other day, a mother came to the school, a deserted wife, and she actually asked us if we knew whether she could sell her boy. She was a simple Macedonian woman and had no idea that she was eligible for a deserted wife's pension. Most of these people are from primitive rural areas and are quite unprepared. They have no idea of the terrible shocks that are ahead of them. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. My name is Ahmed. I am the Hoja at the mosque. Friday is a holy day for us. Everyone who is not on the day shift at the steel mill comes to pray. It is my job to keep strong the customs we were taught. I'm single, so I only have to watch myself. But it is a big job for the head of a family. My friend Abdullah comes from the same village. He's married and has some children. He works with me at the steel mill. I come from Turkey. I am shoes maker. Oh, Turkey, I have the, some problems. I work in our day 15, 16 hours. Only money is in food and dress and some for rent, some like that. I never save money in the day. Life is very hard. I first, I want to go Germany, but uh, too many people is over there. I like to think change and I come to Australia. Australia very good. You can do anything. I sell money here. I buy house. I can buy anything. Uh, I am be lucky in the Australia. Uh, my uh, my wife born two sons over there, but no long life. She's a he's a dad over there, but 
come to Australia, born two sons. Uh, I give first one my name, Abdullah. The second one I give the, my father name, Ali. Two good boys. I am very happy. Family very happy too. Everybody like Australia. But I forget the, my daughter, Emine. She's come from Turkey. Uh, she's 12 years old now. <laughs> Emine, ask your mother, what does she like about Australia? She said because she likes um, lots of things about Australia. Tell me what she doesn't like about Australia. She doesn't like one thing about Australia that her parents aren't here with her and her friends and you know and she can't go to someone and speak to them about in Turkish and you know and all her friends aren't here which which in Turkey that were, they were. So she's really very lonely in Australia. Isn't yeah. She? What does she do for friends? Friends. Um, she makes friends with that. Uh, we have there's there's some Yugoslav people across the road, and you know she goes and talks to them. You know, half half in Turkish and half in um, English. And you have no trouble making friends yourself, do you? No. Only some of Emini's new friends are Turkish. Yeah. Only some are Muslim. This doesn't matter to Emini, but it does matter to her father. It matters to all Muslim parents because the lessons that they learned in Turkey from their teachers and their parents, reinforced by the Quran, are being threatened by education in a new country. You watch me. I'll do it and I'll say it. Then you'll do it and you say it. I'm washing my hands. I'm washing my hands. I'm washing my arms. I'm washing my arms. I'm washing my nose. I'm washing my hands. I'm washing my eyes. I'm washing my eyes. This is the reason why we do wash before we go for prayers. We wash all our uh, sins away, and then we go. We have to go pray in the presence of God. If you put a drop of vinegar in a pot of milk, then the milk will go sour and bad. The Muslims are exactly the same. They got to be very clean and pure before we go to the presence of God. Our language is different. Our ways are different. It is difficult to teach the children in the way we are taught. And it is difficult for the children to accept what we say. In this country, girls can do what they like, the same as boys. But it is not like that in my country. Most families don't allow their children to freedom they have here. Children must ask permission before they do anything. For instance, we are always afraid of losing a girl's virgin life. Virginity is very important to girls. They must be pure, otherwise they have no future and their father is dishonored. Boys must learn to respect and obey their fathers and all the old people. Abdullah, what did your father teach you when you were in Turkey as a young boy? My father teach me always, first, no smoke. Second, no much drink. I have to do the, what they say to religion. Help people and uh, keep family. No trouble, no, no steal and no touch somebody else. Help, he say always help poor people and somebody else. I teach him my children some like that. A Muslim should pray five times a day and fast one month each year. A rich Muslim must give money to the poor. But the main thing is to keep our hearts pure. In our religion, uh, it is written that if we don't teach our children the right way, it is not they who will go to the fire, but the father.
parents of Cringilla are working in the steel mills to provide a better life for their children. But the factory floor is waiting for any children who don't make the grade. When they start school at five years, they start a long way behind scratch. They have little or no English at that age. And statistics tell us such children rarely catch up. Listen for the number of the lesson. Draw two red fish facing the same way. If the children of Cringilla hope to escape the factory floor, they will have to work twice as hard as Australian children. The moment a child comes out of school, she comes under pressure from the traditions of her parents. Emily likes to play basketball, but her father wants her to learn traditional Turkish dancing. She has made the school's best basketball team, but the competition is played each Saturday morning. That's when the dancing lessons take place, and so far, tradition is winning. Emily learns dancing. A child in Cringilla has to keep a foot in each camp, the present and the past. <laughs> Emily, could you ask your mother how old she was when she married? All our patients Sixteen. And did she ever go out with Abdullah? Did she ever speak to him before she married? Well, how did she meet him? And how did they know that they were going to be married? Before they met each other, their mothers and fathers you know, met each other and spoke about it and right, so they were married. You're right. Now ask her what she thought of Abdullah when she first saw him. Gördüğüm zaman dedi babamın ne ne diyordu dedi. Konuşmadım ne bileyim hiçbir şey demedim. Gördüğüm zaman onu beğendim mi beğenmedim. Yeah beğendim. Arada 14 sene geçti. She thought you know he was good. Abdullah was a good boy. Abdullah what did you think of your wife when you first saw her? I said all right because. I don't like it, don't get married, you know. If I like she didn't like him, he wouldn't, you know, if he didn't like him, he wouldn't get married. Well, ask your mother, when, when she did get married, what advice her mother gave her? Her mother said to her that, that the man is the biggest in the house and, you know, the mother must obey him and, uh, when if she goes somewhere, you know, the man she should ask the man, and you know, to stand the house and do what what a woman should. And now that she's in Australia, does she still ask permission? Can I ask her name? Do you want to be Yeah. Abdullah, will Emine have the same regulations, the same controls that your wife had? Yes. Yes, I like it. Same control and. So she won't go and meet her husband herself. You will arrange the marriage. Yeah, but Emine can see too. Emine can uh, talk to him too, but don't boyfriend, not go dancing, not go outside. Salan, estetik dikkat et. Mehmet, estetik. Sen de salan. The customs and traditions of the migrants are being taught to the children. Educationists say that it's good that children are taught these things, that they develop a pride in their old culture, but it can fight the new learning. In Cringilla, the teachers have the influence only from 9am to 3 in the afternoon. 
Outside these times, the old world takes over. <laughs> At schools such as Cringilla, teachers like Luke Levisianus are trying to break down these sharp divisions and normalize their day. We're building up a supply of books in ethnic languages appropriate to the children and soon we'll be teaching them in their own languages. Because I think if we concentrate on English alone, we're contributing to a situation where the children are being educated away from their families. The child becomes the only link with the outside world for his family. The child has to interpret for his mother and father. And it's this interpreting situation that constitutes a real problem. You've been here before? No. She's no she's you ever been here before? No. You ever been upstairs in a bed? Yes. Yeah, for the baby. For the baby? Yeah. What's his surname? Mary What's wrong with her? Oh, oh, she had a stomach and a little bit of a um, This morning she was vomiting all the breakfast she had. And um, this, this morning she was vomiting all the breakfast she had and the stomach this is very sore. Just take a seat in the waiting room, thank you. Uh, we have quite a few migrant children come in here. They come with their parents and uh, we use them as interpreters in the cubicles. Sister, can we have a look at his cubicle, please? Um, well, that one's busy. Um, we use the stretcher here for the... Uh, patient and we use the uh, children usually behind the curtains so that they're um, not where the doctor's examining the patient. Um, sometimes a little bit embarrassing for the children. It is, especially when they've uh, come in with gynecologic problems and the doctor has to ask several very personal questions, doesn't it, sister? It's very embarrassing. The most normal questions that are being asked with a lady that comes with uh, abdominal problems, for instance, is when ask your mother, when was uh, your, her last period? And Some of most of the time, the little boy doesn't even know what you're talking about. No, he just stands and sucks his thumb and shakes his head and laughs, and that's it, and he doesn't know. It's uh, very difficult for us to try and explain to a child of nine year old what a this blood loss is and where it's coming from. It's the same when they come in with these problems about toilets. They don't know what you mean when you say, have you had your bowels open? They, and how many times? And what was the consistency? A nine-year-old child doesn't know what the consistency of his mother's motions is. Also, uh, we find that uh, most Yugoslav ladies, or migrant ladies, that uh, have a very low pain threshold, when the doctor examines them, they moan and groan, which is also, of course, again, very yes, painful they, for they the children. Idea. Little boys come in with the fathers with the urinary problems. We tell them that the father must take his trousers right down, and the little boy has to stand here, gazing at his father on the couch, and you have to ask him, uh, the little boy, when his father uh, passes urine, does it hurt before or does it hurt after? And the little boy just stands, shakes his head, and uh, I'm stood there saying, pass the water, and he doesn't know. And in the end, I have to resort to the same language that the child understands, which is the language that the father picks up at the stairway, and I very uh, reluctantly have to say to the child, ask your father when he last pissed. And uh, this the child says this quite openly to his father. It would shock me if my child said it to me. But this is quite normal for these children, uh, just to stand here with the father laying with his trousers down, uh, and the child asking him these very personal questions. When did your father last have his bowels open? He doesn't know. Um, and this is not just the Yugoslavs, it's not just the Spanish or the Portuguese, this is all the nationalities. These children see and hear situations they're too young to cope with. It's heartbreaking, I think. I would hate my children to have to go through a thing like that. Good morning. Okay, how are you? How are you, Ziggy? Good? All right, sir. Sit down. 
Haki, I just wanted to mention that we would like to send Zeki to see an eye doctor. Uh, Zeki, would you explain to your father? The child has assumed the role of the father, and the father in this instance has become yes, the child. Says that Worse still, whether the father realises it or not, the child's a new language is leading him further and further away from the influence of the family. The children look at their parents as being stupid. Dad can't talk English, he's stupid. I can talk English, I'm just a kid. So Dad must be stupid. Uh, from the father's point of view, I think it's even more tragic. Uh, in Turkey or Yugoslavia or whatever, he's been the, the patriarch of the family. Everybody else... Uh